I don't know about you, but sometimes I can't sleep. Today I managed three and a half hours of not so restful shut eye before my body decided it was time to be up. So instead of laying in bed and scrolling on my phone, I've taken the opportunity to get up and do the thing that I'm always encouraging you to do, which is to invest some time in my creativity, in my art, and in my craft. And I've set up a nice little space on my back patio. I've got my tea, I've got incense and fragrant plants to keep the insects away, and I am sitting here working. Um, but it doesn't feel like work. It really does genuinely feel like creativity. And I figured while I'm working on the behind-the-scenes type content, you know, the voiceovers and the editing and choosing the music, I figured I might as well set up this camera and share with you guys uh, the sunrise and the, hopefully you can hear them, the sounds of the rooster up the road and there will be a moment, it happens every morning and every evening, where the forest around me comes alive. I genuinely hope I'm able to catch the audio of it on camera, though I'm not sure it will translate as well. It's just this beautiful moment where the birds and squirrels and insects and sometimes also the frogs just start singing. I've said this in the past, each place that I have lived has its own fragrance in the morning and in the evening and this place is no different especially on a kind of rainy morning like this one where it's been sort of drizzling all night and there's mist and fog in the air and the pine is wet I really wish that I could bottle these kinds of fragrances and share them with other people and maybe someday I'll figure out how, but in the meantime, um, the best I can do is just <laughs> describe it with my words. Again, I'm not sure how much of the sound of my space out here is translating onto my mic and the camera that I have set up. But there's also a train in the distance, and you can hear my neighbors getting ready to go to work. Some of them starting up large construction machines, and others just driving up the highway. The highway is wet, so you can hear the splash of cars as they pass by. And every now and then my wind chime catches the wind just right, and you can hear it kind of tinkling, if that's the right word, in the background. I can really feel it. There's this sort of energy, this sort of wonderful, impending, like this feeling of impending excitement that something new is about to happen. And I'm telling you, this happens every morning and every night here. It's like, everyone knows that something is about to happen. Something wonderful. And that thing, of course, is the sunrise. I mean, what else could it possibly be? And so everyone here is just right this very moment beginning to yawn and stretch and if they're huddled up next to someone they love they're turning to them and saying honey it's almost time to get up 
And there's no reluctance in it. There's no hesitation to start the day's duties or to begin the morning song. But right now, there's this beautiful, subtle appreciation. <laughs> this beautiful, subtle appreciation for the, the warmth of a hollow, the gentleness of a partner's breath as they rest, the sweetness of the air, and then the first lilting notes of the morning song begin. And it starts small, and it's accompanied by wind rushing through the pines, and then it starts to catch like the most beautiful thing you've ever felt. Powerful like wildfire, but life-giving like rain. It's spiritual. It's not just some creature opening its mouth to shout into the void. It's, it's absolute beauty in nature's time and the sun starts to come up and the dark becomes light with exponential speed even on a cloudy day even when sunrise is accompanied only by the thick gray of Washington clouds. Every morning and every evening without fail, the forest takes a collective breath together and begins to sing. And every opportunity I get to experience this, it's a spiritual awakening. It's something new and beautiful and tremendously healing. The almost unfathomable concept that I've had to accept for myself is that this happens in the desert too. This happens everywhere. This happens in the city. This happens in the country. This happens underground. Everything has its timing, and it's natural and perfect and cyclical. I want to take this opportunity to talk about my poetry, because I am waxing poetic at the moment, and my heart is filled to the brim with prose. Last night, as I was falling asleep, I was struck by a whirlwind of words after having a dearth of any sort of poetic turn of phrase for about a year. I guess not fully a year, but long enough for it to feel like an age. The fact of the matter is that on January 1st of this year, 2024, somebody so dear to me passed. She was a mentor and a friend, and for quite some time in my life, she was like a mother. She took me in when I had nowhere else to go. She gave me food when I had nothing to eat. 
her passing has been by far one of the most incomparably large losses of my entire life. And it came on the heels of what felt like a two-year long streak of losing. When we finally arrived and found a home in Washington, after losing the promise of New Mexico and having to give up a home which we searched long and hard for and which we put considerable time, energy, and finances into at a loss. My heart was supremely broken. I was terrified to be so close to Idaho and the extremist groups there who certainly do not wish well upon me or my family or my child. And I was disparaging, but I, f I f forced myself, I think correctly, to find ways to integrate into the community around me because I had finally reached a point where I understood that there is not safety in isolation. And as a result of my efforts, I began to improve. My mental, emotional, and even physical well-being went up. I felt okay. And then I felt actually good. I was meeting up regularly to write with my friends who I met through a local writing group. I had uh, started to actually consider returning to the workforce in a positive light instead of something that I was scared to do. And I thought maybe the string of losses is over and I can, I can just start healing without feeling like I'm just constantly sustaining emotional and mental and physical damage. Her death is complicated. She was chronically ill with the rarest form of a rare autoimmune disease. And I visited her in November of last year. And she wasn't as well as she had been. But she wasn't as bad as she'd been either. It was so nice to see her again and to stay with her again. During that last visit, and subsequently, she said some very beautiful things to me, some very kind things to me, and some very motivational things to me. And where we had kind of fallen off in keeping daily contact, we resumed, which was beautiful. I went home and we talked almost every day and then she was hospitalized and then she was just gone. I don't talk about any of this because I still don't feel like words are enough and I use poetry as a means to heal and a means to recover and a means to grow and explore and express my emotions. And I think a lot of that has to do with um, my struggles with interoception and understanding not only how am I physically feeling but how am I emotionally feeling and sometimes it just helps to throw up <laughs> my words in a weird prosy sense onto the page and I was unable to do that for the first time in 
so long deprived of that coping mechanism. And it really forced me to almost hibernate creatively. Last year, I published a significant amount of work despite everything else that was going on. I even graduated with my bachelor's degree in February of this year as a result of all of the hard work that I did in 2023 to continue forging a way forward despite the circumstances that were making it very difficult to uh, push forward at all in any in any sense of the word financially emotionally mentally creatively and so the last poem that i wrote was in february of 2024 and for all my saturdays of sitting down and staring at pages of work that I desperately, desperately wanted to do, I barely wrote anything at all. I had forced myself to take six months off from school from the time I graduated until beginning my master's degree in August, and that time off was meant to be dedicated to my creative pursuits, but I just didn't have anything inside of me that was accessible and it was such a struggle to even put any real words on the page which is actually why I decided to pick back up on my YouTube channel I needed to do something creatively because I was just feeling so stuck And as it turns out, (laughs) this was exactly what I needed to do. And I think also I needed to give myself time. But this entire year, I've just felt so shut down creatively and spiritually, really. And my relationship with spirituality, obviously, is very complicated. And I don't think I'll ever really fully address it here because it's not really anybody else's business. But this week which is, for me, week two of creating this art um, and, and really diving face first into this experiment, I've suddenly found myself feeling an eruption of creativity in all areas. And so I figured I want to share that with you to any viewers or listeners who are here and who are emotionally or creatively, mentally, physically stuck. Just know that Everything happens in nature's time. Nothing is permanent. It's all cyclical. And you could very well be, as I was for the majority of this year, in that moment, lingering just before the first breath of that morning song. And so if you're feeling stuck, I just want you to think about that. I want you to think about how, and obviously this is a bit of a romanticized view, and I am willing to accept that, but think about how the seeds that grow into trees and other plants have to have a period where they're just in the dark, under immense pressure from soil, and they're cold, and they are wet, and they have to split open in order to grow. And you could be in that moment right now. I mean, it really feels like you've been buried. It really feels like it's the end. You could be in the moment like the animals in their little cozy dens, at five o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, where they know in just a short time the sun is about to come out, but for now, they're in the dark. And I just, I imagine that they're not thinking much at all, especially about how am I going to create today? How am I going to function today? 
And obviously they don't have the same concerns we do, but... I mean, how much simpler or easier is their life compared to ours? I would say not much. But they are probably thinking, it's dark right now, which means that I should be resting. And I'm going to rest because it's dark. And when the morning song begins, I will join in. But it's not time for that right now. So, after two seasons of silence, two seasons of dormancy, of cold and wet, despite the sun being out, two seasons of feeling buried, sage, and the press of words at the dam of my mind, and my damnable tongue dares to speak your name. That's the first poem. After two seasons of nothing. And it's so simple. And yet, just 48 hours ago, I couldn't have given that to you at all. I couldn't have written those words, or spoken those words, or thought those words. And anything I tried to push out would just be strained and feel so ingenuine. And now I've written six. I've written six poems since that moment last night. And I attribute that moment to a culmination of things that I'm going to sum up as nature's timing. Thank you so much for joining me for this morning song, for this meandering, wandering, rambling exploration of myself as the sun begins its ascent. The morning sky is a beautiful gray, and there's a light, misty fog between the pines. And the morning song for these creatures, who are my neighbors, has begun. And now it's Time for me to get back to work. Thank you.